Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Help promote and rank up my channel. Check out a channel trailer right up there. So we're here to review Thor Love and Thunder. Spoiler review. So, oh, this film. There are so many rapid fire jokes in this film that not only does it undercut the serious stuff, but it also undercuts the impact of the jokes themselves. It's like some auction house motor mouth guy going full speed trying to do stand-up comedy and everything's just falling flat. They're crickets. The audience is dumbfounded. Left speech loss. <laughs> right. Reaction loss because it, this is just baffling. More like Thor shove and fumble. Because everything misses the mark, and it's trying way too hard to be funny. Oh, you flip too hard, damn it! It is just all over the place nonsense. How many times do we have to see Thor go on a journey of self-discovery to find out who he is? Four films into it? And not to mention you've got him in all the Avengers movies. So, I was actually pleasantly surprised by some of the things in here. And then I was also incredibly disappointed by some things I didn't expect to be disappointed by. Let's talk about the positives and then the negatives. positives on this one I mean you've got a solid cast all these actors can act you enter a film Chris Hemsworth as Thor I mean that nobody does uh, could do Thor like Chris Hemsworth is doing Thor and it's always enjoyable to see him he is jacked up for this film really jacked up um you do get a uh, brief couple of brief little scenes with the guardians of the galaxy doesn't last too long you do get the introduction in the end credits of another famous marvel hero coming into play hercules um throughout that and surprisingly to me natalie portman as lady thor actually worked There are some, uh, I'll save it for the ne uh, negative section, but for the most part, it worked. Her and Chris Hemsworth, they actually, I felt like they had chemistry this time. I've never liked her in any of the previous Thor films. But this time, I actually felt like they had something, and they could have really done more with it. She's my first bad guy. But the little stuff that you do get in here, and I do enjoy it even though i don't find it funny at all i do enjoy that she's kind of foolish in trying to come up with catchphrases of this she's just this naive woman that's her first outing as a superhero and she's kind of silly in that avenue um but thor and her they really played well together out there in the field of battle there are some very solid action sequences a lot, this is like eye candy. This film has got all these dazzling places, locations, uh, really cosmic and fantasy. You've got your screaming goats and just a lot of dazzling visuals. And there is some humor in here that does work. But the vast majority of the film is humor. So when I say there is some humor in here that does work, oh... Uh, the vast majority of the film is humor, is comedy. But there are other important things in here. Thor does get some key moments. We do shed some more light on the romance he had with Jane. And why it... You know, add some context and substance there where there was none before. There are certain things in here that work. Gore, Christian Bell. There are moments where he's really creepy. It really comes off cool and awesome. The, the way he just disappears into the shadows. And certain things in here that are really well done. Korg, 
been overused. Sometimes his presence is enjoyable. Their ship with flying goats and the, for a, a moment, it, there's the love triangle with between the weapons. Stormbreaker, Monir, and Thor. There's a love triangle there that's a little bit interesting at first, then just kind of overdone. Interesting things in here. Lady Sif! But at this point, I really feel like I'm trying very hard to say positive things in here. Let's just get to the negatives. And it's on this one, like I said. It's rapid fire jokes. It's constantly non-stop rapid fire jokes. It undercuts everything you thought. I thought it was bad in Ragnarok. How the humor would not really give you a lot of time to breathe and have Thor really let these losses settle in because he's losing everything left and right and this film even addresses that he's lost everything left and right but it plays it up for humor everything in this film gets played up for humor there are some really good interesting scenes that have to do with natalie portman lady thor you know her having cancer and the fact that using monir is making her cancer worse because her body's not defending itself um there's some good stuff in that but it's all lost everything's lost like even the good touches of romance between her and thor where they kind of like brushing fingers and stuff like that, that, that all the stuff is constantly undercut by ridiculous cartoonish parody level humor it doesn't feel like a thor film it feels like a parody of a marvel film even when the guardians of the galaxy are on screen you've got Thor doing these split kicks and all this crazy nonsense. You've got him getting stripped down butt naked. Uh, they don't blur it out. And if, if it were to happen to women in the film, it would be god awful. That since it happens to Thor, it's funny. Uh, you've got just so many things in here. And it really is baffling. Taka, Taika Wakiti went way too far he, he fully embraced himself this film i think chris hemsworth said that this film is the equivalent of a child running wild with their imaginations that is uh, that's exactly what it is but it's at the cost of a big mcu budget and all this effort to go into the film to make all these special effects and cgi look as good as they do and it's it's very silly, shamefully silly. I don't know how anybody can have a straight face. It's baffling silly, even gore. Christian Bell, you got a monumental casting choice like that for a character where he's on the hunt for gods, wanting to kill them all, and that's barely even set up. It starts off very strong with the loss of his daughter that's really sad, and then he meets his god. He's lost his civilization, he's lost his daughter, he meets this god, the god mocks him, so he wants to kill the god with the necro sword that kind of called to him. So he kills the god, then he decides all gods should just die, and it's barely fleshed out or anything, and he's all almost not on screen for the majority of the movie when he is on screen it seems like a tonal clash because his stuff's all dark and this film is just all bright colorful and trying to tell constant jokes like it's just throwing everything available thor is a complete buffoon at this point i was so worried that you know they're gonna do what they always do because disney has this trend uh where they bring in said female hero slash replacement type and they make the male look like an idiot kick him in the balls let the woman sit on his shoulders to prop her up that's that's what disney does the, the female like loki made to look all good he is praised by loki himself and the male is made to look like an idiot but in here lady thor was pretty well handled my, my only gripe is that she suddenly known how to use all these powers and stuff so well there should have been a training montage element in there at the least you're doing all this 80s stuff anyway just slap on an 80s track and give a montage of thor trying to train her on how to use all this stuff instead of just jumping into it like she should know all of it um i'm not really fond of the way she gets the powers and gets monir uh, 
the way it just reassembles for her and this really just feels like some Saturday Night Live stuff it, it, uh, a parody of Thor I did not think Thor would be one of the weakest elements in his own movie when we're not doing something like kicking him to prop up the woman it, it just everything's bad in this film it, it's so crazy that it's this bad i was baffled i barely chuckled at all through the course of the movie the audience didn't really chuckle at all and i almost even fell asleep in the film i mean it's constantly in your face with dazzling visuals and jokes 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 very quality action like but it's boring and dull because nothing can be taken serious it's almost like you're watching a throwaway or I, I i don't even know why we need this movie at all because it's stupid it's completely stupid it's completely dumb there's no longer any dignity to the character of Thor. I mean, they do have him go on to, like, raise this little Thor. Uh, and I guess that's the whole point, just to lean into New Avengers. I was pretty surprised that they killed off Jane in her first, first outing. But nothing's taken serious here. How long has it been since Thor and Sif interacted and he just comes across her and her arm's been chopped off and she's like, she's ready to go by the Valhalla and he's like, well, you didn't die in battle so you wouldn't go there. Maybe your arm did, but you what? It's just stupid. It's dumb. And I was really looking forward to seeing Lady Sif again. Nope. Nope. Uh, overall, I would give this film... A 5 out of 10. It's completely average. Uh, maybe... I I don't know if that's even the right score to give this thing. Because it's just a ridiculous mess that could have been so much better. It has quality action, dazzling visuals, some jokes that work. All-star cast. But it, it's pretty dumb, trashy pointless adds really nothing of value to the MCU honestly because anything that added any value to the MCU in here well it could have been done in something else that was handled much better the introduction of Hercules or the Thor daughter <laughs> these things could have been done better in a better film in a better way there's nothing in here of value honestly to me now maybe some people really love it cool more power to you uh but good god like subscribe comment let me know your thoughts and opinions if you enjoyed the film good for you good for, honestly good for you you didn't have to suffer like me and that's awesome that is awesome Stay awesome.